Hello and welcome to my channel. In today's video we're going to be doing a pumpkin and I'm going to use this background that I've already got. Yesterday evening I was doing a talk at a local art group and we were doing autumnal landscapes and I was doing them in various, various stages. Some that I had allowed to dry and then worked on afterwards and we were layering them up. So this was an example of the very first step of the background where I wet the paper entirely and put lots of different colours in. So for that one I actually used, excuse me I'll just get these, the Sennelier paints, um, the travel set and all these colours, I let them mix together on the paper, it's a hot pressed paper, it's a Saunders one and I used these this orange and these two reds along with yellow and some green you see the green peeping in there and also the burnt sienna and just allowed those colours to merge on the paper but also using plenty of water so we've got these lighter areas as well so the intention was for this to be the background for the landscapes we were doing last night but obviously this one was a wet one and we went on to the other stage with some that I'd done before so what I'm going to do with this today I thought it'd make a really nice background for a pumpkin so I'm just going to work on top of this and allow these colours to show through and use similar colours on top. So if you wanted to do this yourself at home you just need a nice hot pressed paper, tape down well, something nice and smooth that can take plenty of water so this is a 300 gram paper. Um, and I've not got a reference photo at all from a pumpkin obviously you need that to be completely dry before you start your drawing so I'm just going to do the drawing out of my head and start with a very basic shape here nice and big but don't forget to leave some space up here to put the top in the little stalk so it's a nice smiley round shape that we're going to be putting his face onto so think about the dent in the top it obviously goes in there and then you have this little area where you're going to have your stalk coming out and they can be quite quite big stems can't they quite chunky stems and they're usually quite textured with a few lines on so we don't want too many pencil lines we just want to give you give a feel of the shape and then we'll come and put the rest of it in with pen but you have these ridges going out and where they go out and down follow the shape around and make as many or as few of these as you want and at the base here they tend to go in and out so we've got that basic shape but then you want to go in and out where those little ridges are to make it a bit more interesting so to show up for the camera I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go over this with pen in a moment but before we do that we need to think about putting a face on this so it obviously needs to be quite scary so let's just think about his eyes um, and don't forget these eyes are going around the shape as well so think about making them curved at the base there so although I'm, I'm making them a little triangle but I'm going to make them look as if they're going around because we're cutting into a difficult object there think about how they would look once you cut them uh, maybe a nose the other way up again with it going around the object and don't make it too even and perfect because they never are, are they, when you do them with a knife? Um, and what shape mouth should we have? Let's go for some jaggedy teeth. Don't overcomplicate it because you're going to make the drawing of it more difficult if you do. But just a jaggedy shape for his mouth. And you'll see he's a little bit offset, he's a bit quirky, but that's a good thing. If you wanted to make it more perfect and have him dead centre and have the whole thing symmetrical you could work a little bit more on your drawing but I think if you keep it quite free and quite loose you're going to end up with a bit more of a quirkier pumpkin than you would doing it too perfect. Okay so I'm going to go over that now with some ink. I'll come back to you in a moment when we get on to doing the paints and have a chat with you then but for now I'm going to go over it with some ink and I'm actually going to use a sepia ink. I think the black would be a bit harsh on this colours that we've got here.
Okay, so I've got the lines down there. Actually, I'll just get my rubber. I've just noticed that I've missed rubbing out some pencil there. So you can rub your pencil out once you've finished doing your ink drawing. You might just want to do this in pencil. I really did that so that it would show up a little bit more for the camera. Looking at him now, he actually looks like somebody's dropped him from a great height and he's pretty squished down here. Perhaps he should have been a little bit rounder down here, but I'm not going to worry too much about that. Um, like I say, it's, he's quite quirky and they come in all different shapes and sizes, don't they? So I've made up a nice amount of yellow in this centre. So whichever nice bright yellow that you've got, plenty of it to begin with. And I'm going to paint over the whole thing except for the cutouts. So just carefully go around the cutouts, but even the stem, everything, I'm going to go over with this yellow. Okay, so it's all covered now with one layer of yellow. You can see I was quite delicate about that. When you're painting on top of paint that's already there, don't be scrubbing your brush at the paper. Just be careful you're not lifting that colour up from beneath. So it has to be completely dry. I mean, this obviously is because I did it last night, so it's had all overnight to make sure that it's completely dry. But be very gentle. Imagine that you're painting over a glass surface or, or porcelain or something and you want to avoid breaking it. Be really gentle putting that paint on. And can you see how all the colours from underneath are still shining through? We've got little bits of highlights and things and that's just giving it a lot more character and some shadows and some perhaps blemishes in the pumpkin that are there naturally without us even thinking about it. So that's going to be a still, still a little bit damp but I'm going to carry on and do the stem whilst that's still damp and I'm going to get some of that burnt sienna so I'm not introducing any more colours into this I don't think I need to other than those colours that I've already got in the background. The burnt sienna, sorry, I'm getting tongue tied. The burnt sienna in the Sennelier set is very red compared to the one in my Winsor & Newton set, which seems to be a bit darker and browner. So I'm just going to pop a little bit of this into this stem. And but the yellow is still shining through, so we've got that nice bright colour in there. And you can still see your pen lines because we've got plenty of water there. We're not covering the whole thing, obliterating that yellow or the pen lines. We're allowing that all to show through as well. And it all adds to the character there. And a few little bits and bobs of brown around the base. Like I said, because I've got no reference photo, I'm just doing this out of my head. It makes it a little bit more tricky. You could get a reference photo if you wanted to. I'm sure there's plenty around at the moment. And I'm just going to get a touch of green into that because it might be that this still a little bit of green in the stem there. In fact, there could be little bits of green in the pumpkin itself, but I'll just drop one or two bits in, in areas of the green and then just leave them colours to merge in together. Don't be too particular with them. I'm just going to lift a little bit of a highlight out while it's wet just to give a bit more interest as if we've got some light maybe shining down that side. So that's just with a damp brush taking that colour out. And I think that's enough for the stem, we'll just leave that as it is now. Don't need to fiddle around with that anymore. Just gone over the edge a little bit there. Okay, so as for the pumpkin itself, it still needs to be a bit stronger in colour to come away from the background more. We want the background to fade away and have this as the focus. So we're going to get some of that orange colour now. So that's this one here. Um, 
When I've spoken about this, this Sennelier travel set before, I sort of explained that when it first came, it had actually five oranges, red colours in it, um, which was a bit excessive. I swapped one of them out. So compared to the amount of yellows and blues, it was there was an awful lot of reds in this set. But they are really lovely, lovely, lovely colours and nice to use at this time of year. So I'm not going to add anything else to this orange. because we've got all those other colours underneath that are also going to be added in there. Now you could put another even colour layer on over the whole thing or you could do, as I'm doing here, just leave little bits of that yellow, use a bit of dry brush in places, fill it in completely in other places, just mix it up a bit, a bit more uneven to give a bit more interest. still allowing those other colours to come through. Whilst that's still wet, I'm going to put a touch of the red into that orange just to make it a little bit darker and make a slightly different colour, but not too different. Make it a little bit thicker as well, less water, and I'm just going to go over where one or two of those lines are, where it's where it dips in, you know, where the, the pumpkin itself dips over. But whilst it's still wet so that it all blends in and it's not looking too much of a harsh line just allow it all to mix in and then we'll leave this to dry and we will come back and put some shadow colours on also take a bit of a line around here to differentiate the top from the where he's cut around there for his, for his top Okay, and I think that's enough painting for on him apart from obviously his eyes. So while this is drying, we'll start and work on his eyes. So here I've mixed to a similar consistency, some Payne's Grey, and this is some of the orange and the yellow mixed together to make a bit of a candly type colour, a light colour. Um, and I'm going to do use these for the cutouts. So if we think about it, the candle's going to be letting out light in the centre here and as you get further away from that that's going to be darker so what I'm going to do is wet each shape one at a time very gently and it won't really matter if the colours that are touching it there on the rest of the pumpkin are still a bit damp and they move into it because it's not you know it's all the similar colours it's not going to spoil it at all unless the black goes out sorry the paint's grey goes out into the rest of it of, of course so if we're thinking the candles here it's going to be darker further away so if you just drop that in actually it is too wet what I should have should do is wait for it to dry and not be so impatient so I'll tidy that up and then I'm going to wait for it to dry before I carry on. You see there I've made a, a big mess allowing that to do that. So I'll, I'll come back to you in a moment when I've let it all dry. Okay, so now that's dry and that's just an example of how being impatient with watercolour makes mistakes. That was entirely my fault, just being impatient, not leaving it to dry. So leave it to dry before you move on to that next stage. So what I was going to do, so obviously this area is now dry, looking a bit of a mess because of what I've done. Carefully wet the area of the inside of the eye there. Get the panes grey and put it furthest away from where we think the candle's going to be. The 
this time it's not flowing out and then get the yellowy orange colour and put it nearer to where we think that light's going to be in fact I'd prefer that if it was more yellow than orange so I'm just going to get some yellow straight out of the pan and pop that in let it mix there on the paper that looks better with more of the yellow in so I'll add some more yellow into the one in here it's a lovely bright yellow okay so we'll hopefully make a better job of this of this next eye so for something like this you want a nice point on your brush so that you can be quite accurate don't have it sopping wet either just nice and damp again think about the furthest away from the candle wants to be that dark Payne's grey you could use black if you wanted you could make your own black from your primaries there's all sorts of ways to make a nice dark colours but the Payne grey's Payne's grey is quite easy because it's there ready on the palette and then again the light and leave it to mix in that eye looks a lot better than the first eye I think again we've got a tiny bleed there that's just where I went over the line with my brush so just get a dry brush to tidy anything up whilst it's still wet So his nose really is perhaps not going to have too much darker of a dark area and I think I'm just going to do the whole thing in that brighter colour. And pop some more yellow in that again as well into the centre there. Plenty of yellow. And let the colours mix on the page and get that effect more of the, the light of the candle in his nose there and then we'll wet his mouth again it wants to be damp not sopping wet just be careful if you're new to watercolours and you're still getting used to them one thing that is easy to do when you're washing your brush off in between colours and things is to get little beads of water on it which then drip down and you end up with more water on your brush than you anticipated so it's, can, you know, it makes it more difficult to calculate what you're putting on there so just be aware of that so again we're going to go furthest away from the, where the light source is with the Payne's Grey He's not very mean this one is he? You could make somebody look one look a lot meaner than this. And you could do two or three on the same page as well which would be quite nice. Even expand it, add some leaves, apples, all sorts of things to make an autumny, Halloween kind of scene using this technique. I'm just wondering, looking at him now, whether I think it might look better with a little bit of the dark colour on the edges of his nose. It just looks like his nose isn't showing up too much. Maybe just put a touch here and there. I think that just makes it stand out a little bit more from the rest of the pumpkin. Okay, so I think we'll leave that for now for his face and I'm going to mix up a shadow colour. The shadow colour I'm using is just a violet and I've got plenty of water in there. You can see it's quite watery, it's not a very thick mix. And I think violet makes a nice shadow colour for yellows and oranges. And he really needs putting onto this surface here because at the moment it just looks like he's floating in mid-air. So let's get a shadow underneath him. You know, because it's out of the imagination and we've not got a reference photo, we don't have a light source either, so we don't know where the shadows would be. So again, it's just 
imagining a light source so maybe you want it to look as if the shadow's going out this way more and you, you may even want two or three shadows but I'm just trying to keep it simple and obviously there's light coming out of here as well so perhaps the shadow wouldn't be as close to would be closer to him there rather than further away so I'll just with a damp brush again not a wet brush a damp brush I'm going to just soften the edge of that off whilst it's wet don't leave this to dry soften it whilst it's wet just so that we don't have a, a hard edge on that shadow but actually shadows do cast hard, hard edges don't they in the shape of the objects that they are and make it a little bit thicker and put some extra nearer to the oh gosh that's maybe too thick but never mind Actually, I quite like that. It looks quite nice against the orange, doesn't it? So I'm going to bring that out a little bit further. And again, just tease it around with a damp brush. So you've got a softer edge on there. But again, you can still see those other colours showing through, which makes it a much more harmonious painting, allowing those other colours to show through. I'm just going to take a little bit of water up to there and let it flow into it to make it blend into that background more. Okay, now I'm going to add a little bit of extra water to that again to make it a little bit thinner. And then I'm going to think about where there might be some more shadows on here. And again, it's totally imaginary, so just think about where things could cast a shadow just to make it look a bit more convincing and don't forget that this is going to be drying a lot lighter than it goes on so you're going to get shadows in these areas here down that side again if you use a bit of dry brush technique you're going to get a bit more um, texture into your pumpkin just lie the brush on its side And always move your brush in the direction that the pumpkin's going in as well. So I think we'll leave that side a little bit lighter. And we'll just get a bit more on this side. And again, we'll go this way around to indicate that lid. bit of shade underneath the cutouts as well I'm quite happy to leave this looking quite sketchy you might want to soften some of those edges off that's made a nice colour with that lilac and the red there mixing together okay So I think for now I'm going to leave him to completely dry and then I'm going to come back with that Payne's Grey and just touch him one or two areas just to lift him out a little bit. Okay so now he's completely dry I'm just going to pop in a little bit of extra Payne's Grey just in areas. I'm not going to soften this off, off at all I'm going to use it to make quite sharp edges there. Watercolours work best when you have a nice combination of 
some soft edges and some hard edges. Always try and get contrast into your paintings, makes them more interesting. Just the corner of his nose there, it's just going to make it more obvious where his features are. The corner of his mouth. And also by going a little bit darker with that, it make, makes the lighter areas seem even brighter. I'm going to pop a little bit here where I feel there will be more of a shadow. And again under here, go nice and dark. And that's all, like I say, when you go much darker in areas, it makes the lighter areas appear to be even lighter. So although it's quite convincing as colour-wise, I do feel I just want to pop some of this yellow on. I've still got lots left on the palette and I really like it. It's a lovely bright colour. So I'm just thinking in areas I'm going to pop that over, especially this side where it's nice and bright and light. You know, you can go back over that lilac, it doesn't matter. You can see how much those shadowy lilac colours have faded as they've dried. Don't look anywhere near as dark as they did. I just really like this yellow colour and it's nice just to put one or two highlights in and around that eye where um, we made a bit of a mess, but never mind. Okay, so you might make a better job of this than I have. You might have a much tidier looking pumpkin. You might have him a bit fatter than I've got because he's a bit skinny. Looks like I say, it looks like somebody's dropped him on his head. Um, but yeah, just that technique works quite well, I think. Having those colours behind and then painting on top of them means you've still got all these little highlights and, and things that could be little blemishes in the pumpkin as well. So make very delicate layers, make them very transparent so that the other colours from beneath come through and you can make get that texture in there then as well. So not the best painting I've ever done. It's uh, Like I say, it looks like he's squished. But I like the colours together, I like the purple as, as a shadow colour and I think he, he looks quite nice on that background. Like I say, you could try putting a few different objects together, some apples maybe, some leaves, some conkers, anything on in using this kind of technique. But just the main thing to remember is keep those layers delicate, use plenty of water and allow them to dry in between the layers. Okay, so I hope you found that useful. Let me know what you think in the comments below and I'll be back again with you soon with more tutorials and demonstrations. Thanks for watching and bye for now.